everybody, and welcome to the final episode of the Online Warriors podcast for 2022. Woo! I am your host, Nerd Bomber. I am joined here by Tactic. Hello, hello. But unfortunately, someone else couldn't come. His name is Illegal. There's been a lot of holiday shenanigans, so we had to make do with this crew and give you some Us too. Busta Rhymes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure as you guys have heard all over the northeastern United States, there have been tons of travel cancellations, crazy windstorms, even all over in Seattle, all over the United States. There's ice storms, crazy weather that's really just upended the holiday season. So, you know, it's just the two of us. And while we were going through and looking for some news topics, you know, typically our episodes are formatted that we have some news topics to discuss and what are you up to, then a quiz. First of all, there's only two of us and I believe we already have a winner of the quiz. I might be wrong on that. We'll have to double check in the it's new you. year. It's you. But yeah. You're, you're trying to be I'm, humble. I'm, it's I'm you. the winner. <laughs> so... The trivia quiz for this year, I mean, that's all pretty much solidified, so we will not be doing that to close out the year, but we will be starting that up back again next week. And since there's only two of us, you know, it wouldn't make sense anyway, but there's also not a lot of news. You know, it was a holiday weekend. There wasn't a ton of nerd news. So we figured in celebration of the impending new year, we're going to do something a little bit different. You know, I went through and I was just curious. I like to look up different holiday traditions internationally, you know, and see what other people around the world do to celebrate their holidays. And so I found a smattering of different international New Year's traditions. And I figured we could, you know, educate everybody about that and also just discuss Technic is going in blind here. Blind. But before we do that, I do want to make sure that we shout out our fantastic Patreon producer, Mr. Stephen Keller. Take a bow, sir. You are the boss, the knight, the man. Yeah, Stephen Keller is fantastic. He was on our show a little bit ago. He'll have another guest spot coming up soon. As a Patreon producer, he gets this weekly shout out on our show. He also gets to guest on our show occasionally, as well as vote in our quiz topics. He also gets access to the monthly vlog and the monthly secret segment, which are both exclusive to our Patreon subscribers. If you want to know more or if you're interested in supporting the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash online warriors podcast. And now let's get into some traditions. Tactic, are you feeling festive? Yes. How has your Christmas been going? How is your holiday season going? My Christmas has been all over the place in the best kind of way. We've kind of mixed and matched to make sure that people's travel plans doesn't don't get messed up. And it's just been fun. We made sure to kind of hang on to some of the things that we hold near and dear. So like me personally, growing up, we always had a little tradition where we open up a chocolate orange for as a stocking stuffer. And this year, I introduced Nerd Bomber's family to the chocolate oranges, and it was a success. So this has been a fantastic year for me. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun. I mean, obviously giving and getting a lot of really great gifts this year, but also just, you know, we had a lot of time because of all of the weird different travel shenanigans to really just kind of hunker down and tactic. And I got to spend a lot of time that we normally wouldn't get to just kind of relax. We made some cookies. Typically I make cookies with my mom, but we also made some like new cookies apparently. With her new mom, me. (laughs) No, but I did not realize that you can make cookies out of basically just egg white and sugar. And anybody who's a baker is probably listening to this like, wow, you're silly. You know, that's like pretty much a cookie that's meringue. And yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that's how meringue was made. We were bored. We had watched and binged a bunch of Christmas movies and we're like, hey, you know what? Let's see what we can make with the ingredients in our house. Settled on meringue, which is apparently somewhat difficult to make. And I'm going to I'm going to be a little, you know cocky here. I think I nailed it on my first try. Tactic did have to help me separate the egg white from the yolk because I, I don't know how to do that stuff. But I had stiff peaks. I didn't, so stiff. I didn't even know what that meant before. I'm going to leave you wondering because it's, it's funnier to just say stiff peaks and then you, you, you can Google it if you want to bake. Even or, if you know what it is, it's still fun to say stiff peaks. Stiff peaks. But yeah, I, I was whisking stuff. I made, you know, foamy egg white and then added sugar. And then I just had this like delicious 
little marshmallow fluffy cakey thing and it's crazy baking is crazy guys so i had a pretty good christmas and i'm looking forward to my new year's do you have any resolutions this year tactic <sighs> so that sigh was intentional last year my new year's resolution was looking into the year i want to write a book how'd and that go i did not accomplish it however However, I did develop a better approach to this problem because I, I think I want to con- steadfast on this New Year's resolution because honestly, I made good progress. And my original approach was to write this novel, this, this, this vast story with crazy detail. And then I decided that's not my jam. So what I'm going to pivot to for the next 2023 is a book of books, a a novel filled with short stories. I think that's my jam. And and honestly, if you want to get into writing, I think it's really important not to just jump right into writing a book, to, but to jump into finding your jam, whether it be strawberry, grape, whatever, find your jam. And so that's my New Year's resolution is, well, I'm going to say my 2022 was to find my jam. My New Year's resolution for 2023 is to ride my jam. You know, I think that's fair. I think one of the things that's super underrated, so people, you know, we all set out these New Year resolutions. I feel like one of the things that people get really hung up on is if they're going to achieve or fail. And I think that's kind of a problematic way to look at resolutions because it's really discouraging. And I think the point of a New Year's resolution isn't necessarily to find something and succeed at it, but maybe to try something new. And maybe if you're not good at it, you know, you get to do some trial and error. You get to decide if this is for you or not. Or even like one of the biggest things, and I know this has always been a big problem. I mean, the standard New Year's resolution is always like, oh, you know, I'm going to get fit and healthy. And then what happens is it's the holiday season. You know, you've relaxed for like two weeks or whatever, or you've been running around. And then the New Year hits and right off the bat, like it's not always feasible to be going to the gym every day or you're not going to get into a schedule or a you know, a routine right off the bat. You might go to the gym and you might try to do weightlifting and you have no idea what you're doing. So then you get discouraged and you don't go back. And once you kind of like break that routine early on and you don't succeed right away, then it's like, oh, well, I'll wait till next year. And I just think that's like a a bad way to look at resolutions. And I think that's kind of initially where you were with the whole writing a book thing until you kind of pivoted to finding your jam. Because I think it's just, you know, it's, a fresh start. It's not necessarily something that you're going to fail or succeed at, but maybe an idea for, hey, in the upcoming year, I want to try this. Or, you know, I'm going to slowly kind of get involved in this new hobby or activity that I want to do. And you're not going to be perfect at it. So I think that's totally fine. So what's your New Year's resolution going to be? I'm going to, this is bad because I feel like I say this every year, but I am going to, again, try to get healthy. And I think that's kind of Well, no, because I always do start out really hot, but then I feel like especially the last few years, there have been a lot of hurdles and roadblocks in the way. And I actually did really enjoy going to the gym, working out consistently. And I think now I have, I got a fancy new bike I'm very excited about and just getting back into the swing of things. And I think one of my other resolutions too is kind of what I was saying, like not holding myself to such a rigid, you know, accountability level because we're human. And I think that's part of my problem. And anytime I set a goal is that because I hold myself so rigidly accountable, if I falter even a little bit, I won't go back to it. I'll just be like, okay, well, I failed. Like, I'm done with that. And so I think one of my resolutions this year is not to kind of hold such a rigid schedule or, you know, checkbox to the things that I want to do. And I think that's a vague kind of resolution, but I think that's going to really help me like, One of the big things that I also wanted to do last year, I think I said I wanted to like recommit to playing the guitar and I did that for about two weeks and then I faltered on my schedule and then I was just like, well, I already failed. So I'm just going to, you know, stick to the chords that I know and not learn anymore. And I think I just like to, you know, dabble and give myself the ability to dabble. So I think my resolution is just have a more relaxed year, be healthier, but don't be so rigid and just dabble in the fun things that I want to do. I want to play games. I want to read books. I want to play my guitar. I want to exercise. I think all of those things are okay. And for the first time in a long time, I'm going to give myself the freedom to do it. Hell yeah. Be like Nerd Bomber, people, and just give yourself that freedom. I like that. Yeah. So that is my resolution. And, you know, this New Year's Eve, 
we are going to be doing our own little special tradition. So in years past, we used to go to, you know, these big like gala party things. We're not super fancy. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it was a nice like night out. And when COVID hit, it kind of forced us to reevaluate, especially that first year. Like, what do we want to do on New Year's? And Tectic actually came up with a nice little tradition for us. Yeah. So every year I decided, I think I might have mentioned doing this on the podcast in brief years, but every year we now do a fondue night where we have a three course meal. We got some meats, we got some cheeses, and we got some chocolates. And it's just at home, bottle of champagne. It is, I'm, and I'm not trying to like be skimpy here, but it, it is significantly cheaper than like going out. But like just the the being home, being comfortable, relaxing, obviously some dim lights to set the mood. No, we're not, we're not heavy necking on this episode, not tonight. Um, but it's just, it's a good tradition. And the best part about like a fondue night is it doesn't have to be a couple things. Fondue is meant to be shared. So it could be, you know, a small gathering of friends or, or a couple thing, or even just like a large gathering of friends and just have it on this weird corner that people just drive by dip. But yeah, so get back into fondue. It's very 80s, very retro, very vintage, and it's a good time. Yeah, I really, I've been enjoying it. And like you said, it's not necessarily something that we only have to do alone. I think it'll probably evolve over the years. But I think having that be like a cornerstone of our New Year's is is pretty neat. And it also gives us the opportunity to like play board games and do fun stuff that, you know, I feel like in the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, like the six days, I feel like between Christmas and New Year's, job withstanding, like if your job allows, if you have that time off, I feel like it's one of those times where you truly get to relax. There's not really another time throughout the year where you really just get to just melt into the couch or just kind of like take a breather, take a step back. You're not really supposed to do anything in those six days. You're just supposed to kind of enjoy the holiday if you can, if your work allows. And I think it it is kind of nice to just take that step back. Like New Year's used to be this day where we had to run around and like fit all of the stuff in. And then we'd have to like get super dressed up, do our hair, my hair, makeup, all that kind of jazz. And it is it's nice to just relax and have that like final last day with your loved ones before you kind of go out back into the world and start the hustle and bustle all over again. And just as like a tangential side note, getting together with and was something we were talking about over dinner uh for christmas but like getting together doesn't have to be this big event it could be honestly like a taco bell night where you just buy like a buffet worth of taco bell like dollar menu stuff and just have people together it doesn't have to be going out to bars doesn't have to be going out to a restaurant just gather with people it could be low effort and just a good time so that was our kind of new year tradition that's our plans for this year And like we said, maybe it'll evolve over the years. Maybe we'll go back to going to big galas with friends. Galas, galas, I don't know how you pronounce it. Apples, events. The ball. The ball. Maybe we'll be the bell of the ball again someday. Who knows? But we also want to hear from you guys. What are your guys' plans for New Year's? How do you celebrate? What are your traditions? And how was your holiday season? If you celebrated Christmas, if you celebrated Hanukkah, if you celebrated Kwanzaa, how was your holiday? What did you do? Did you enjoy it? Let us know. You can hit us up on Twitter, our main show account at Online Warriors One. I'm at OW Nerd Bomber. Tactic is at OW Tactic. You can also find us on Instagram and we're on Facebook at Online Warriors Podcast for both of those. Let us know. We're really interested. We want to hear what you have to say and what you guys are up to. So now, We're going to close out the show going over some of those international traditions. And I I want to get tactics like real time reactions. And, you know, these aren't really like super off the wall stuff, all of them. But I'm just interested to see like if he would be interested in doing any of these. I've got my Owen Wilson reactions ready. And at the end of this tactic, I'm going to ask you, which is your favorite? Like if you had to pick a nationality specifically based on a New Year's tradition, you have to let me know which one it would be. So like and this isn't like New Year's like all at the same time, right? It's that it's that individual culture's New Year's. Right. Okay. So the first one up is obviously we know the United States. We all watch the ball drop at midnight and watch, you know, Rocky New Year's Eve and stuff like that. One of the ones that I find really interesting, it's a little bit more specific. So in Spain, they actually start their New Year's off by eating twelve grapes. 
So they do this, you know, about 12 seconds before the strike of midnight and they have to eat all 12 grapes before midnight. In 12 seconds. In 12 seconds. Wow. If you manage to eat all of those grapes by the time the clock finishes striking midnight, it's believed to ward off evil while boosting your chances of having a very like lucky, prosperous new year. First of all, I have to say, I don't think I could do it. Talk to you that you could eat 12 grapes in a matter of 12 seconds. I'm not chewing. I'm swallowing them whole. I could do it. You think but so? But I'm swallowing the grapes whole. Like, I would be afraid of choking. Oh, this no. seems like a choking hazard. It's either choke or ward off evil. You pick. I guess. But like, I don't know. I wonder if you could do like, you know how Chubby Bunny, the whole, the old thing where you like stick as many marshmallows in your cheeks as you can and you're supposed to say like Chubby Bunny each time you add a marshmallow and then whoever can fit the most marshmallows wins. I wonder if you could like Chubby Bunny it where you preload the 12 grapes and then like. No, that's cheating. You think that's cheating? Yeah. I, well, you can keep in mind, a second's pretty long. It's one, two. But you got to chew those suckers. No, swallow them whole all day long. You're throwing them back like pills. <laughs> I feel like, so I think that might be the difference because I have a hard time swallowing pills that are bigger than like an Advil. <laughs> and even like when I get super sick and I have to take like a Mucinex and there's like a horse pill, I struggle. I'm like standing there with my bottle of water for a good like five minutes trying to get that down. So yeah, I don't think this would be for me. I would be cursed all year. Yeah, I could open up my throat hole. I can just pour liquid down it. Like You can open up your throat hole. I have no problem swallowing. I said it. All right. So <laughs> you are apparently okay with that tradition. I don't think that one is for me. Uh, another interesting one, and I feel like you're going to like this one a lot. So in Japan, they actually kick off the new year by eating a warm bowl of soba noodles. And apparently this is tied to a Buddhist temple back in the day, giving out noodles to the poor. But it's believed that eating them because they're easy to bite, they break easily, you know, cutting into and biting into the noodle is believed to be symbolic of a literal break away from the old year and starting new. So as you're chewing through noodles, you're basically breaking the noodle in half and separating your old year from a new fresh start. Okay, I could say already that trumps, you know, guzzling grapes. <laughs> guzzling grapes. Easily, easily. Yeah, I think that one, that seems the easiest. There's not a time limit on that one. I also already really like soba noodles, so that's like top tier for me. Um, another tradition is out of Denmark. So they actually throw old plates and weirdly, you're supposed to kind of like chuck them off, like at your friends off your doorstep. And the more that you can accumulate on like your porch area, it's supposed to be the more luck that you'll have throughout the new year. This one I feel like could be fun, but also like... Dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. And I like my dishes. Like I would not want to have to buy well, they, new plates every year. They probably buy throwing plates. I can see that being like a commercialized thing. Um, but this one, like... One, can you imagine being the stoop with no plates? That's just got to make you feel bad about yourself. Two, after the fun is done, there's cleanup. I don't want to be cleaning on like a like I want to be drinking and eating eating soba noodles. Like I just want to be having a good time. So like this is dropping all the way to the bottom. I I'm I, everything is going to be relative to grapes. This is below guzzling grapes. <laughs> you know, actually though this does remind me so one of the traditions we have obviously in the United States is you know having those like party popper things and it gets confetti and stuff everywhere. I hate that too. And when I was growing up you know, we necessarily couldn't always afford party poppers and stuff. I know they're not that expensive, but like my parents would choose to lean in on like better food. And so instead of buying party poppers, what we would do is we'd blow up balloons and then, you know, in like a three hole punch, it le leaves little dots behind in the little, the, I don't know, the little r reservoir. Yeah. So we would take that, we'd fill up balloons and then we would tape them around the house and instead of doing party poppers, we'd go at it with a fork and we'd each try to pop as many balloons Honestly, as we could. Honestly, that sounds way more fun than party poppers. It like, was, but the cleanup was a mess. I give my parents a lot of credit because then they'd have to go around and vacuum up all of those little dots. This was before Roomba times. This was well before Roomba times. So yeah, I give my parents a lot of credit. It was a lot of fun though. I really looked forward to that every year when I was a kid. I was a huge fan of that. That and, uh, you know, the champagne... What my parents would do is, you know how the, the champagne cork pops off and my dad would do it down a hallway and whoever would find it first would win. We wouldn't win anything, but it was just 
fun. So Good tradition. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking of cleaning up at this point. So another one is actually out of Colombia, and this one I find really interesting, and I feel like I wouldn't like this one either. But apparently on New Year's Eve, they place three potatoes under each family member's bed. One is peeled, one is not peeled, and the other one is like partially or half peeled. And so then at midnight, each person grabs for one of the potatoes with their eyes closed. And depending on the potato they pick, if it's peeled, you're going to get good fortune. If it's not peeled, you'll have financial struggle. And if it's like partially peeled, it'll just be like a meh, okay year. You could feel the difference though. A peeled potato gets slimy. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, is this just a ruse so that they think that there is different? Like, if you're in Colombia, I, I want to know, like, do you feel around for the potato? Or is it like the first potato is this monitored, like the first potato you touch? Like, that's the potato you grab? Or like, do you get to kind of like feel around? Because you could feel a slimy potato. I don't want a potato in my bed. Well, no, it's under the bed. It's not in your bed. Still don't want a potato yeah, in your bedroom? I already got a potato in my bedroom. <laughs> I married her. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, another interesting one this is from Ireland so they actually bang bread against the walls and this is thought that by bang- banging a loaf of bread throughout the walls and doors and this is like a Christmas loaf so I'm assuming it's probably a little bit stale because it's been sitting around for a, a week or so um, it's supposed to be warding off evil spirits as you head into the new year but the question is does this like do you get crumbs everywhere I, I want to know. I got to know. These, the, like, you start off strong with noodles. And, like, these are just, all I see is, like, mess. And I feel, I, I feel like an old crotchety person. I'm just, like, mess or, like, oh, you're wasting food or, oh, you're wasting dishes. Man, I'm, am I old? I think you're getting I'm old. Because, I mean, there's a lot of mess. Like, think about... When you pop open a bottle of champagne, like, I can't even tell you how many times I've been at, like, a New Year's party back in the day when I wasn't as old and crotchety, not that I'm that super old now. But, you know, people would do the whole, like, I'm going to shake the bottle of champagne and spray it everywhere. Like, that is equally as much mess. Like, I'm I'm with the bread. Like, give me the bread tradition and the soup tradition. But, like, basically, you're just giving me soup with a side of bread. <laughs> Another one I feel like this is one that you're going to like. So, in Mexico... Families gather on New Year's Eve to make food, especially tamales, and then they hand them out to loved ones on New Year's Eve. And it's supposed to be, you know, giving the gift of tamales, homemade tamales on New Year's Eve to show, you know, your love, your caring and your wish of goodwill into the new year. Yep. That's the number one so far. Give me some tamales. I'm good to go. You've you've officially pivoted me from the bowl of soup. And then this is the last one. This is nothing to do with food, really. I feel like a lot of these are having to do with food and like just kitchen stuff in general. This one's a little bit different. So in India, apparently they kind of make an effigy and then they, you know, kind of stuff notes or symbols of bad things that happened to them in the old year and then they burn it. And it's just kind of like a, you know, obviously burning of the effigy of all of the bad things from the last year and kind of giving yourself a fresh new start for the new year. I think, honestly, like food aside, I think that might be the my all-time favorite because like that's got a, like almost like a level of therapeutic to it. Like it's just, you know, 2022 sucked, but we're going to take a breath. We're going to feel the warmth of the fire and we're going to move forward. We're going to... we We have had some growing that has occurred and we're going to be stronger and we're going to move forward and we're going to put that behind us. That's like, I like that. I like that a lot. I think that should be like something that's just kind of mandatory. Plus, like it's cold, honestly. Let's like, let's throw fire in you either way. Either way. See, that would be my only like misgiving about this tradition because I do, I agree. There's something very kind of like, like you said, therapeutic and just very symbolic about burning the bad things from your past. I mean, shoot, I don't know about you guys, but I'm too lazy to shred bills. So what we tend to do in the summer months, you know, like we'll have a campfire and you know how you need like fire starters. So we'll save some old bills and stuff that we've already paid off that we don't need. And that is our fire starter. You know, we'll use it as the the base of our fire to get the, the rest of the kindling going. And it's just like, I mean, it's not like we have bad memories in the bills or whatever, but it's what, just like what was so, bad yeah. from 2022? 
bills. I have to pay <laughs> bills. <laughs> I mean, aren't they always bad? But my only misgiving is like, I don't have an indoor fireplace. So do I have to go out? Like currently in a lot of the United States right now, it is like single digits cold, very cold. Do I have to go out in that type of weather and uh, light some stuff on fire? Oh, because... I think that's fine. I, I wouldn't even worry about that. Honestly, I have I have like friends of mine that one of their traditions is to grill steak on New Year's. Doesn't matter the conditions. And even like, in the middle of a snowstorm. Absolutely. Especially in the middle of a snowstorm. So like the cold, whatever, it's just, it's all part of the experience. Rain, shine, sleet or snow, you're burning those memories. So if you had to pick one, this would be, this would be the one. your favorite one? This soup and tamales. Those are my top three, but this is, this is number one. Very interesting. I think I'd probably go with the, the soba noodles. I think that, not that I don't like tamales, because I do, um, but first of all, I think that, you know, the symbolic, like there's a more symbolic break between like the old and the new year. I don't have to worry about going out in the cold. And there's something just warming about soup. Like when it's cold on New Year's, like right now, I think I could go for a nice like ramen soba noodle type, you know, soup. I, I don't know. It would be very comforting. So I think that would probably be my favorite. Well, you're kind of lame. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So before we cap off this episode, you know, we have been doing things the last week. Is there anything else you want to do as like a short little what are you up to to cap off 2022? I want to do a shout out to a board game we played. And this is actually why I said you can even just like get a bunch of Taco Bell and have some friends together. So actually last year, Nerd Bomber got me a board game. It's like a Taco Bell board. It's the Taco Bell party pack game. Yeah, it's a Taco Bell party box. And it's it's a very simple game. It's just you have to get the most tortilla chips based on like satisfying customers' orders kind of things. And like not only was it fun as like two people playing, but I can very easily see it like just being a whole big game night where I would legitimately get like a buffet of Taco Bell, invite some people over and just play this game with a large group of friends. I... It's just, it was a very low bar to entry as far as like knowing how to play it. And just, it was entertaining. And it's just, and you know how in some games, one person can just like end up just driving away from the pack. It was through and through. It seemed to be very even and balanced to where. Well, not initially. It was one of those games where I thought for sure you were, you know, pulling away from me. And then surprisingly at the end, it was a lot closer than I thought. Right. And that's, those are the kind of games where almost at the end of it, it's like a surprise who won because everyone just kind of stays together as far as your overall points because, like I said, it's not like things stack or anything. So everyone's always continuously on even playing fields, which I think keeps the game entertaining through and through its whole like play si- cycle. Yeah, you don't like check out when it's very evident that you're losing, which has not... like That's been the case in some of the like deck building games, which I love deck builders. But in some of the deck building games, it like becomes very obvious when your deck starts to suck. And some of that just comes down to luck, like what cards are available and what you're able to afford when your turn rolls around and what the other person has available to them. And like sometimes you just get to a point where you're like, wow, OK, this is just bad and I know I'm going to lose. And then you're just like kind of checked out. So that's my thing that I wanted to shout out. What about you? Uh, I did want to shout out the Santa Clauses. We watched this and it was better than I expected there i will say that um so this was something illegal had started to watch and he was just like immediately no immediately no i do not want this immediately no and so i went in with very low expectations and like it was cheesy it was a little cringy it was a little slow to start so i think yeah. if you go in immediately no and don't give it a chance i don't yeah i that makes sense to me but if you like watch the first three i think you'll start to get invested like, I think when it expands beyond just Tim Allen's Santa, it begins to get really interesting when they start developing the other characters around him. And, you know, I'm talking about his children, you know, Mrs. Claus's wife, whose first name I forgot, which is kind of a joke in the show as Carol. well. Carol, thank you. And like the elves around him in the North Pole. I think once they start to kind of develop those other characters, it becomes more interesting because... Tim Allen alone as just Santa, I, I get I get why illegal was like immediately no because it was kind of like cringy and a little just outdated, 
And he was just, he was kind of doing like old man yells at clouds, like, oh, the world these days, blah, blah, blah. And so I think once you get past that and they actually start developing the story and the other characters, it was, it was, I mean, it was a wholesome Christmas show, you know, like it's exactly what you were going to get. Like you knew what you were going to get going in, you know, it was kind of more of the same of the Santa Claus. I don't know how they're going to do a season two, to be completely honest, though. I don't think they should. Like, it has already been renewed, I believe, for a season two. And I don't really, like, I feel like that's no. Like, you had a good thing going here. Just leave it at this, like, six episode short little featurette. Oh, but, like, just leave it. I, I don't want to say this without spoiling anything. But, like, basically, I, I'll it'll spoil things. I can kind of see where their merit for season two is. But I can't say why that is without spoiling things. But yeah, I thought it was something that we kind of binged, you know, the the days leading up to Christmas. And it was very like warm and fuzzy, very like low investment, too. So we could watch one and then we could get up and make some cookies. And we didn't feel like, you know, we were glued to the TV and there was no like I mean, they were kind of cliffhangers, but there was nothing that was like stressing you out. It was just very low stakes Christmas goodness. So if you're into Christmas stuff like that. I mean, get past the first couple episodes and I think it'll be a little bit less cringy and a little bit more enjoyable, especially, you know, if you're really into the Christmas spirit, like you can set some of that stuff aside. You know, you expect a certain level of Christmas cringe in all of the movies. So that is our last episode of 2022. We appreciate you guys sticking with us for this entire year and all of the years prior. You know, we could not do this without your support. And we really appreciate you guys listening. Any feedback you guys have for us going into 2023, we are always receptive to. Hit us up on any of our social media platforms or shoot us an email. We have our email available on our website, www.onlinewarriorspodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Happy New Year.